Praise the Lord, and welcome to the New Horizons Church online worship experience. We are so glad you are here. On behalf of our pastor, Eric L. Wiggins, Lady Camille, and our entire church family, we pray that you will encounter the Lord Jesus in a real and life-changing way today. God is doing a new thing at New Horizons Church, according to Revelation 21.5. So with the help of technology and our media team, we can share God's love and word with you today. If you are with us for the first time, we want to give you a special New Horizons Church welcome. You could have joined so many other online worship experiences, but you chose us. Thank you for worshiping with us today. In keeping with our vision, we are here to express our love for God through spirit-filled worship and to experience the greatness of God through the preaching of His Word. Now, please, back in the comfort of your own surroundings and worship with us in spirit and in truth. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, New Horizons Church family and our friends and happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers and the grandmothers and those who have been motherly to so many um, down through the years. Let me be um, uh, grateful to God and thank God for all of you who are mothers and we give and we wish you a really, really wonderful day today. I pray that uh, you'll be blessed. I pray you'll be able to be around your family. You'll be able to be around your friends. You'll get your flowers that you so richly deserve. We thank God for God using you to bring men and women, boys and girls into this world and, and nurturing them and loving on them and, and blessing them. And we just believe God's best for you today. Happy Mother's Day, amen, from the New Horizons Church family. And certainly to my wife, Lady Camille, who is the mother of our four children, EJ, Elena, Ari, and Andrew, we wish uh, Lady Camille a happy Mother's Day as well. Listen, we're getting ready to worship the Lord and we're glad you tuned in to our virtual broadcast here at the New Horizons Church. We're grateful every day we're able to minister to the people of God and minister the word of God and worship. And our worship today is gonna be out of Psalm one, uh, excuse me, Psalm 18, verse one through three. Psalm 18, verse one through three says, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Amen. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Listen, when we call upon the Lord, we're calling upon the one who is worthy of our praise, meaning he is due our praise. He has earned our praise. He is worthy of our praise. And so Stephanie and the praise team are getting ready to lead us into worship. I pray wherever you are, you'll set this time aside. You'll sanctify yourself. You'll sanctify the space that you're in. You'll sanctify this uh, moment in time to give God all the praise, honor, and glory. And after the worship, I'll be back with a word from the Lord to encourage us on this Mother's Day. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you. We honor you and bless you and praise you. You are worthy of our praise. We agree with the psalmist today. You are great and greatly to be praised. So God, I pray that we would separate and, and uh, get ourselves apart so we can be in your presence, God. Get, a, get us away from every distraction, everything that would cause us to miss your presence today, God. We wanna experience you in real and refreshing and rich ways today. God, bless all the mothers who are tuning in, all the grandmothers, all those who have been motherly, God. We pray a special blessing upon them, their children and their grandchildren today. Thank you for your mercy enduring to all generations. God, we give you the praise, honor, and glory. It is in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, let's worship the Lord together. Then after that, we'll study God's word together. God bless. Oh, oh, yeah. Do it again, Jesus. Do it again. Walking around these walls. I thought by now they'd fall 
but you have never failed me yet. Waiting for change to come, knowing the battles won, for you have never failed me yet. Oh. Again. You'll make that way, Jesus. I'll see you I'll do see it again. 
Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Thank God for our worship team. Thank God for Stephanie and our musicians. They do an awesome job. I pray that you experience the presence of the Lord wherever you are as we sing and worship the Lord. Uh, I know he is pleased with our praise. And there is a word from the Lord today in Luke chapter 7, the gospel according to Luke chapter 7 and verse 11. I'm going to read from the New King James Version of God's word and listen to what it says. Luke chapter 7 verse 11 and following. Now it happened the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him and a large crowd. And when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. Then he came and touched the open coffin and those who carried him stood still. He said, young man, I say to you, arise. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak and he presented him to his mother. Then fear came upon all and they glorified God saying, a great prophet has risen up among us and God has visited his people. And this report about him went throughout all Judea and all the surrounding region. Amen. Amen. Verse 13 says, when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. Then he came and touched the open coffin and those who carried him stood still. And he said, young man, I say to you, arise. Amen. I want to preach from this thought today. Mama, it is not over. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mom, it is not over. Amen. When we find Jesus here in Luke chapter 11 uh, in verse or Luke chapter seven in verse 11, he has just come from another miracle that has been produced in the life of another person. In fact, there was a centurion soldier uh, whose servant had been sick and he sent word to Jesus that if he would just speak a word, his servant would be healed. And Jesus turned to his disciples, turned to the crowd who had been following Jesus. And he said to them, I have not found such great faith in all of Israel. And as he spoke that word, he declared that the servants uh, or the centurion soldier's servant would in fact be healed. And at that very moment, uh, the servant, uh, his illness went away and he was restored back to his original health. Jesus then moves from there and the Bible says he comes into a city called Nain. And as Jesus is making his way with his disciples and with a large crowd that is following him into this city called Nain, as he's coming into the gate of the city, there is a mother with another crowd of people, a crowd of mourners who are carrying her son. The Bible lets us know it's her only son and that she is a widow. They're carrying him out to be buried um, because he had died. And it is in this encounter that we we see the comparisons of two different crowds who meet up at the city entrance of Nain. There are two different crowds. There, there's the Jesus crowd, and then there's this crowd that is following this mother. And, and every now and then, we, we can go through situations and circumstances, uh, mothers can understand this, where they're mourning something going on in the life of their children. Uh, being a mother, you give birth to a child, you give birth to a boy or to a girl, and you, to the best of your ability, try to nurture and develop and, 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 and pour into that child so that they can be all that God wants them to be. But every now and then, our children can get into something, our children can go through something where they seemingly get carried away. And in the most extreme instance in this text, this, this woman's uh, son is being carried away because he has in fact died. And this is not the only death she's experienced. We've told that this mother, this woman is not only a mother and seen her only child, her only son die, but she's also a widow, which means she's experienced the passing of her husband. And so now her son has been, is being carried out on an open coffin there's a crowd that is leading the procession as they go outside of the city to lead him to his place of burial. 
because there are seasons and times and circumstances. And if you're a parent like I am, that our children can get caught up and get carried away. Maybe not necessarily in the extreme situation where they're facing death, but sometimes our kids can get caught up in the wrong crowd. They can start hanging with the wrong crew. They can start hanging with people who don't mean them good. And the next thing you know, they're being carried away into a direction that God didn't intend for them to go. Sometimes our children can get caught up and get carried away with social media and all the social milieu of the day and start just doing things because everybody else is doing it. Start tapping into things because that's what everyone else seems to be about. And they can get carried away by the, the social norms and the social culture that they live in. It's so easy for young people to get carried away. And, and if you know, like I know, when, when your children are carried in a direction that you didn't intend for them to go, it can cause you like this mother to mourn and to be sad and to weep. And, and there's not a shortage of people who will cry with you and mourn with you because the Bible, uh, well, people say that misery loves company. There's never a shortage of people that can come around when you're going through your miserable situations and they can get caught up and get carried away with it as well. And this woman is in this crowd of people who are carrying her son on this coffin, this open coffin. It was a plank and it had uh, some boards around it and the body of the boy was inside of this beer or this coffin. And as they're going out of the city of Nain, at that very moment, a crowd of another group comes in, namely the Jesus crowd. And when that crowd comes in, they, they have an intersection with this other crowd. And I don't believe this is by coincidence. <laughs> I don't believe this is an accident. I believe this is divine providence. Because when we go through situations where our family, or our children, our situations and circumstances, where we're carried away by our mourning, carried away by our sorrow, carried away by our sadness, the Jesus crowd has a way of interacting with us. I don't know who I'm preaching to today. I don't know who this message is for, but I don't believe you tuned in to the New Horizons Church YouTube broadcast by accident. I don't believe you're here by coincidence. I believe it's by my faith and the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that you're here by divine providence. God wanted you to meet the Jesus crowd today before you get too far carried away. And when you meet the Jesus crowd, that's a different crowd because they have been, we have been experiencing one miracle after another, one faith miracle after another. Remember, the Jesus crowd had just seen and heard of a centurion soldier who had been healed, his servant had been healed just at the very word of Jesus. They had been told that the reason that the centurion soldier servant had been healed was because the centurion soldier had enough faith in Jesus that if he just spoke one word, even if he wasn't even in the presence of the servant, he would still be healed. And that Jesus crowd witnessed a healing at the word of Jesus. That's the crowd that shows up in name. And I don't know who you are today, but you need to connect with the Jesus crowd. Oh, I know people say a lot of negative things about the church. I know people got a lot of things to say about people in the church. I know even people have issues with pastors in churches. And I would never tell you that we are perfect or that we don't make mistakes. But I will tell you this, that the church is the best thing that God has left here on earth. In fact, the church is the only thing that Jesus is going to come back for. He's not coming back for the sorority. He's not coming back for the fraternity. He's not coming back for the Elks Lodge. He's not coming back for the Masons. He's not coming back for the basketball team, the cheerleading squad, or whatever other organizations you want to join. Those are all fine and good, but Jesus is coming back for a church and that without spot or wrinkle. And the reason you want to get connected to the Jesus crowd is because there's faith in the Jesus crowd. There's miracle working power in the Jesus crowd. And mom, I want to tell you, mother, grandmother, parent, boy, girl, whoever you are, I want to tell you it is not over until God, hallelujah, says it's over. These two crowds meet at the entrance of the gate in the city of Nain. You got the 
woman and she's crying and weeping. She's got mourners, professional mourners likely are planning, are playing and, and crying out on her behalf. You've got other family members that are in this procession and this boy who is in this state of not being able to hear and speak and relate to his mom. And you got all of this procession. He's being carried away into the uh, death of the burial spot, into the graveyard. And then you've got the Jesus crowd coming into name. And in the midst of these two crowds coming together, watch what the text says. The text says, Jesus saw this mother. <laughs> Stop right there. That's good news. Don't run past that too quickly. Because mom, when you are going through what you're going through, a child of God, when you're facing what you're facing, maybe morning tears going down your face, and you're caught up in the crowd and, and maybe you're even in the church crowd and there's just a crowd and a mass of people and you're wondering, does God see me? I want to tell you, just like Jesus saw this widow woman from name, Jesus sees you and he sees me. That word there in the Greek when it says Jesus saw this woman, it's not that he just glanced at her. No, no. It's not that he had a cursory look at her. No. The Bible suggests that when Jesus saw this woman in the crowd, he had a laser-like focus on her. He was paying close attention to her. He saw her not just physically, but he saw what she was going through psychologically. He saw what she was going through emotionally. He saw what she was going through physically. And I want to tell somebody that's listening to me today that's been praying for your child, been praying for your loved one, been praying for somebody in your family, been praying for somebody on your prayer list, that Jesus sees you in the midst of your crying and he sees you in the midst of the crowd of people. Jesus knows how to pick you out in the crowd. And as he sees this, this, this woman in the crowd, he doesn't just see her. The Bible says he had, watch this, compassion up on her. I like that. He had compassion on her. He didn't just see her, but, but Jesus's heart went out to her. That word compassion, it, it carries the idea of, of, of a love for somebody that's not just a surface love or superficial love, but it's a deep gut wrenching. It's a heartfelt love. It's a heartfelt compassion. You know, cause some people can see us in our pain, but they don't really see the pain that is in us. Some people see us going through, but they don't know what's going through us on the inside. That's why I love the Lord that I serve because he not only sees me, but he sees what I'm going through. He not only sees you, but he knows what you're going through. The Bible says this about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we have a high priest who can be, watch this, touched by the feeling of our infirmities. God is not a distant God. He's not a, a distant God that is in some far off land who is not in touch or in tune with his creation and with his children. No, this, this picture here, this, this, this miracle that's getting ready to take place here in Luke chapter seven reminds us that God will meet us right where we are. And not only will he meet you where you are, but he sees where you are. And not only does he see where you are, he feels where you are. He has empathy and sympathy. The Bible says he had compassion on this woman. There was something inside of Jesus that was touched by the pain that she's going through. That's why God says you can come to me and find help and very present help in your time of need. God says when you're going through it and you're, 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 you're dealing with your pain, you're dealing with issues in your family, you're dealing with issues with your children, God says, I know what you're going through. I see you and I have compassion upon you. And watch how he demonstrated his compassion. He spoke a word to her. I love that. That's what I love about Jesus. He doesn't just pass her by in the crowd. He he doesn't just keep it moving on whatever else is next on his agenda. No, he sees her. He has compassion on her and he's moved to speak a word to her. He said, don't weep. And when he tells her, don't weep, he's getting ready to do something in her life. 
That's why you need to read the word on a regular basis. That's why you need to listen to preaching and the pre proclaimed word of God. Because when God gives you a word, when God speaks to you, he's getting ready to take action on your behalf. I wish I had somebody that knew what I was talking about, that when you hear a word, there's something that goes off in you that lets you know something is getting ready to change. Something is getting ready to happen. Something is getting ready to turn around in my situation. How do you know? Well, the only thing I know is I got a word from the Lord. He spoke directly to me. How is he going to handle it? I don't know how he's going to handle it. I don't know how he's going to work it out. I don't know what he's going to do. But if I get one word from my God and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, I can take it to the bank that he's getting ready to work it out. But wait a minute. What can God do with my situation? That's what somebody's asking. Pastor, I hear what you're saying, but you don't know how bad my situation is. I, I, I mean, I hear what you're preaching, Pastor, but, but you don't live inside of my house. You don't live in my home. You don't know what my family is facing. You don't know how bad off my relationships are. You don't know how bad off my finances are. You don't know how bad my children are. You don't know how far they have been carried away and the things that they're into. You're right. I don't know your situation. I don't know your circumstances, but I do know what the word says about this woman. The Bible says her only son is dead. He's not fainted. He's not sick. He's not at the point of death. The Bible says he's dead. He can't talk. He can't hissen, listen. He can't see. He can't feel. He can't relate. He is literally dead to the world. And not only that, but the Bible tells us she's a widow, which means in the first century, she doesn't have a husband to take care of her. Now she doesn't have any children to take care of her. She's going to be, in all likelihood, destitute. She's going to have to turn to a life in the streets. She's going to have to make it however she can make it. And while I don't know what your situation is, I would hundred, uh, hazard a hunch that it's not worse than this situation. She's a widow and her only son is dead. And this is the day of her funeral. But when God shows up, when God sees you, and when God gives you a word, anything is possible. Write that down on your notepad. Write that down in your iPhone. Put that on something that you can be reminded of, that with God, anything is possible. I like this because not only does Jesus speak to her, but Jesus takes action on her behalf. The text says he reached out and touched the coffin or he touched the beer of this boy's coffin. Now that word touched in the English doesn't carry the same weight as it carries in the Greek. It wasn't just a cursory touch. Oh no, Jesus literally reaches out and fastens himself to the coffin. Watch this. The crowd is moving to take this boy to bury him. He's literally been carried away to his grave. And Jesus reaches out and affixes himself to a dead situation. The life-giving king, the life-giving God, affixes himself to a dead situation. And when he does, the text says, the men carrying the boy stopped because God has the power to stop death in its tracks. God has the power to reverse dead situations by literally grabbing a hold of it and uh, arresting that which has had us carried away. What has you carried away today? What thoughts have you carried away into some place of worry and anxiety? What situation and circumstance that seems out of your control has you going in a direction that God doesn't intend for you to go? But when you meet Jesus, and he speaks a word to your situation. He'll affix himself to what seems like a dead end situation. And when God puts his hand on the situation, anything is possible. The text says Jesus touches. He affixes himself to that dead situation and stops the procession in its tracks. When he stops the procession, both crowds stop. I can imagine in my sanctified mind, there was a hush over the crowd. The weeping and the wailing, I imagine, stopped. The, the woman still has tears rolling down her, her eyes, but, but she's gotten a word from Jesus not to be afraid. 
The Jesus crowd has seen him do something in the previous verse. So they, they're sitting on tiptoe anticipation of what is he going to do in this situation? And the crowd stops and Luke reports that Jesus speaks to the young boy and he says, rise up. <laughs> and he gets up and the boy rises up. He literally sits up out of the coffin. Watch this. Jesus speaks to a boy who was prior to this unresponsive, couldn't hear, couldn't talk, couldn't relate. <laughs> Has anybody got a teenage boy in their house? Sometimes they don't hear, they don't talk, and they seemingly don't relate. I got a big old boy that looks just like me, that's bigger than me in my house, and sometimes he just goes in his room, doesn't speak, doesn't talk, doesn't want to relate. And when I can't do anything with him and his mother can't do anything with him, we turn him over to Jesus. And I say, Jesus, you speak a word to him. And the next thing I know, he's like this other boy. He's sitting up acting like he's got some good sense because <laughs> Jesus knows how to handle a dead situation. God knows how to speak a word to a dead situation and turn that situation around. And when Jesus speaks to this young boy, Make no mistake about it, he's he's not fainted. He's not just sick. He's not at the point of death. The word that they use for dead means he's dead as a doornail. He is dead to the world. But one word from God can turn a young man or a young woman's situation around. And as that young boy sits up, the Bible says Jesus gave him back to his mother. And then as I close, watch what happens. Remember, I told you these were two crowds going in two opposite directions. One was coming in the city with Jesus. The other was coming out with the lady. But now this boy has been raised from the dead. He's been connected back to his mother. And the Bible says they began to give glory to God because they realized a prophet was in their midst. They began to praise and rejoice in the Lord God because of the wonderful things that he has done. God will change your situation around. God will take a dead situation and turn it around to get himself some glory. Sometimes God allows us to experience pain that we are experiencing. He allows us to experience situations and circumstances we're experiencing. Why? Because when he changes your situation, everybody, including you and everybody around you, is going to give him glory because of what he's done in your life. I thank God for this widow woman from Nain. I hate that she had to go through it, but because of what she went through, God was able to see her, God was able to speak to her, God was able to stop her situation, and God was able to raise her situation back up to new life so that we can give him glory, honor, and praise. Don't let the sun go down today before you give God praise for what he can do in a situation. And if you know, like I know, you've been in a dead end situation, you've been carried away in a direction you don't need to go, and God spoke a word, arrested you, spoke to you, and now look at you here in your right mind, giving God praise, honor, and glory, because God deserves our praise because it's not over until God has had the last word. And that's my word to some mother today. That's my word to some grandmother. That's my word to some person. That's my word to some young boy, some young girl. It's not over until God says it's over. I don't believe you're here by accident. I don't even believe you're here by coincidence. I believe you're here in this broadcast, in this moment, listening to it by divine providence. Maybe you've been carried away going in the wrong direction. And Jesus sent me here as a part of the Jesus crowd so that you could hear his voice telling you, stop weeping so that you could hear his voice arresting you, telling you to get up, that you could hear his voice telling you, I want to reconnect you back with the family and the friends that love you so much so that he can get the glory out of your life. Listen, God wants you to know it's not over until he has had the last word. And God is still speaking. And if God's still speaking, that means he's still acting and he's still moving. I believe the best is yet to come. God bless. Amen. Listen, uh, what a wonderful word from the Lord out of uh, Luke chapter seven, the widow woman from Nain. She saw her young son. She saw her uh, only son raised from the dead because of a touch from Jesus and a word 
from him. And I want to believe God's best for you today. And if you find yourself in a dead end situation, if you find yourself being carried away by the crowd that you're with, I want you to know that the Jesus crowd and Jesus in the crowd can make all the difference in your life and turn your life around. If you're listening to us, you're tuning in to us, uh, maybe it was Mother's Day and you wanted to sit and, and have a good Mother's Day worship virtually with your mother or your grandmother and you tuned in, or, or maybe you are a person who has just been watching our broadcast and been hearing the word of God and you've never given your life to Christ for the forgiveness of your sin. I want you to know that Jesus is able to take us from dead situations and raise us back to life. The Bible says, if you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. I don't believe that you're here by accident. Just like I don't believe that Jesus came into that widow woman's life by accident. I believe it was divine providence. I believe God wanted you to hear this message. I believe God wanted me to be able to speak into your life today because he came to save you from your sins and to forgive you of those sins and to fill you with his Holy Spirit and to allow you to be saved for now and for all eternity. And if you want that in your life, the Bible says there is no other name given under heaven by which men, women, boys, and girls must be saved except at the name of Jesus. My name can't do it. Your name can't do it. Your mom and dad's name can't do it. The only way to be saved is to call upon the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sin. The Bible says that Jesus died on the cross and God raised him from the dead over 2,000 years ago. And that means that God is alive forevermore. And his plan of salvation was that he didn't know any sin. He didn't die because he did anything wrong. He died for your sins and mine. And when we place our faith in him for the forgiveness of our sins, God purifies us. He washes away our sins. He erases our sins and allows us to live life with him for all eternity. If you want that kind of life, and man, I'm telling you, that's the best decision you could ever make. It's available to you right now. You may be saying as well, Pastor, I'm I'm already a Christian, but I need a church home. And I've been listening to you. I've been tuning in to the New Horizons Church virtual broadcast, and I'm not yet connected to a church. Or I'm looking for a church. I want you to know we are excited with open arms. We want to welcome you into the New Horizons Church family. I want to be your pastor. I want to see you grow and develop in the things of God. I want to lead you into a new horizon. And if that's you today, you need to accept Christ or you want to unite and connect with our church, let us know. There's some information um, that you can send to us on the bottom of the screen. Let us know that you made a decision to make Christ the head of your life or you wanted to make this church your church home. And we'll get some information right back to you and let you know what the next steps are in your faith walk with God. I want you to know I'm excited. The angels in heaven rejoice over one person who gives their life to Christ and gets it right. And we're rejoicing with you. We want to get to know who you are. We want to love on you and believe God's best for you. Let me pray for you. And then I'll look forward to what God is going to do in your life. Father, in Jesus name, thank you for allowing us to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ that he saves. Thank you for this precious moment in the lives of your people where they have a decision to make. And I pray, Lord, your Holy Spirit would convict them and lead them to accept Christ as their personal savior. Thank you for making New Horizons Church attractive in this season to those that are listening and making a choice to become a member of our church. God, thank you for trusting us to develop disciples in your name. And I pray now, God, that as we move forward in ministry together, that you'll do great things through us and with us and for your glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, welcome to New Horizons. Welcome to a new relationship with Jesus Christ. We love you and we're believing God's best for you. God bless. Amen. It is time for the offering. Praise the Lord. Listen, when we get an opportunity to worship God and we worship him in, wish, worship him in our giving, we're giving back a portion of what God has given to us. Do you realize how generous God is to you and to me? He allows us to have minds and muscles to work the jobs that we work and to do the things that we do so we can provide for ourselves and our families to put roofs over our head clothes on our back, food on our table. That's just how good and generous God is to us. And in return for his generosity, God says it all belongs to him. But he teaches us that we give a tenth, a portion, a tithe back to him as a representation that it all belongs to him. Think about that for a minute, just how generous God is. 
because he could have said, give me 90% and you keep the 10. But he said, no, give me 10%, you keep the 90%. So when we give to God, we're given out of his generosity toward us, we get an opportunity to be generous back to him. And then God not only is concerned about what we give, but he's concerned about what we save. God says, look at the ant and follow how the ant takes care of his business. The ant in the summertime eats well because he or she saved up in the wintertime. So not only do we teach here at New Horizons to give the tenth into the house where you're fed, but to save in your own house for a rainy day or for a cold season. And then we teach pay off your debt. If you owe money to a school or a credit card or, or you're in debt to someone or whatever it is, work really hard to pay off your debts so that you can live your life owing no one anything but the love of God. And then here's the key, live within your means. When you follow those four principles, you can live a life of financial peace and freedom. So it's not just about giving, but it's about giving and saving, paying off your debts and living within your means. And so when we say it's time for the offering, what we're really doing is worshiping God in our giving for him giving us the generosity and the plan to live a life that is pleasing to him. And then thank God for the New Horizons Church family. Without our tithers and our givers, we would not be able to bless so many in our congregation and in our community. We were able to bless our community partners with our Good Friday worship service over a month ago. We're preparing for our scholarship programs, which we've given over hundreds of thousands of dollars away during the life of our ministry. We've been able to bless those in our community who in our church who are less fortunate. It is because of your giving into this ministry that this is good ground for kingdom building ministry. So thank you so much for your offering today. Listen, there are several ways you can give. You can give certainly by mailing a check right here to the New Horizons Church, 7315 East 75th Street. You can also go on our uh, uh, website at nhcindy.org, follow the org, uh, instructions about how to give, and you can download the Givelify app. That's right, you can download Givelify on your app. Uh, you'll see the New Horizons Church. You'll see a picture of me in our building. You'll have the right New Horizons Church. It only takes a few minutes to fill out the information there. Put in what you want to give, direct it to New Horizons Church, and then we'll get a statement right back to you immediately confirming your contribution to the ministry. Let me pray over both your gift and you as a giver into this ministry. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you and honor you. Thank you for both gift and giver. Thank you for your generosity first toward us. And now we get a chance to be generous back toward you. I pray for victory in the lives of your people, that more souls will be saved, lives will be changed, that you'll be glorified through all that we do. We believe victory in the lives of your people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Again, thank you for your generosity into this ministry. And we praise God for his generosity toward you. Be victorious. Amen. Well, listen, we're out of time, but we're certainly not out of word. What a wonderful day of worship, man. I'm, I'm so grateful for all of you who've tuned in today to the New Horizons Church uh, virtual worship experience. Whatever um, social media platform you're finding us on, share that social media platform with your family members, your friends. Let them know that God is being worshiped here. We try to express our love for God through spirit-filled worship every time we come together. And I praise God for what he allowed us to share and what we were able to experience today. And again, I wanna say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and be encouraged. It's not over until God has spoken. And when God speaks, he can change a situation. He can turn a dead situation around and bring it back to life like that widow woman from Nain. And I pray that you'll go in that word of encouragement today, that you'll go forward in what God has for you. Mothers, grandmothers, those who are motherly, enjoy your day, enjoy your week. We love you and are praying for you. Let me pronounce the benediction over all of your lives. Um, we like to pray according to 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10, the prayer of Jabez. And I'm believing that God is going to bless you indeed. I'm praying that God is going to literally expand and enlarge your territory, meaning your impact and your influence in the lives of other people for his glory. I'm praying that God would keep you from the harm that the enemy would wanna cause you and to keep you from causing pain in other people's lives as well. And I'm believing that today and each and every day that God sends your way. I love you in the Lord. We'll talk to you next time. 
be victorious. God bless. Praise the Lord. Our prayer for you is that God spoke a word directly into your life, exactly where you are. Make sure you don't miss another video message by hitting subscribe on our YouTube channel, New Horizons Church NB. Stay connected by visiting our website, nhcindy.org. Like us on Facebook at NHC Indy and follow us on Twitter at the NH Church Indy and Instagram at New Horizons Church Indy. Be sure to share this video message far and wide with your family and friends. Thanks again for joining us. We appreciate you. Be victorious.